Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. It's Larry, Kilo 7, Hotel November, the North America Radio Guide channel. We're so glad to have you here to join us. We're going to do another video here on the MFJ 1886 Receive Only No Tune Loop Antenna. That's a big key. No tune. It just works. You just put it up and away it goes. No tuning. It's amazing. We're going to start out. Let's get the rig cam on. It's on WWV right now. Now, I want to show you what this really does. And it's a good example to use WWV. And the reason why it's a solid signal, pretty much everybody hears it, right? Hear that lady's voice? That lady's voice is actually Jane Barbie. Remember the time lady from back in the day when you'd call on the phone? That was her. Yeah, they actually recorded her voice and they use it on WWVH in Kauai. So they also broadcast same frequencies as WWV in Fort Collins, Colorado, but they're, they stagger when they talk. So she speaks first at about 58 sec, uh, four, sorry, 48 seconds after the hour. And then the gentleman's voice comes on after hers. So at 59 minutes and at 29 minutes at the hour, you'll hear her do a full station ID and everything. So it's kind of cool. That's Jane Barbie, the old time lady from back in the day. Remember that? Remember that? I do. It's fun stuff. All right. So WWV, let me show you something real quick with the wonderful MFJ 1886. It's a really neat thing I want to show you. Okay, right now we are on antenna one. That means it's a vertical. We're not listening to the 1886. Why does it matter? Here's why. Now we're going to put the attenuation up. We have to. And now you hear Jane Barbie's voice. And you hear the clock tick so clearly let's move it up to 18. so there you go that's why that's the big difference look at the gain go back to the vertical look at the drop you still hear it clearly you still hear it but look at the drop in the S units. We're about S3. Now, S9. <laughs> That's because of the... Here we go. The military auxiliary radio system organization, or MARS, will provide announcements on minute 10 of the WWB broadcast and minute 50 of the WWBH broadcast. These announcements will provide information There you go. Pretty unique. There's Jane Barbie. Pretty unique to hear that broadcast, right? So back on the vertical, we drop way down. Still hearable, obviously. I mean, even on the vertical, and it should be. This vertical's at 30 feet. We go then up to the directional receive only. We're up over S9. That's the beauty of what this does. All right, let's take a look. A few more signals. Short wave wise, just having fun. You have so much fun with this if you're into short wave. I mean, short wave's not dead. A lot of people don't realize that. You know, of course, a lot of things have changed since the internet. No question. No question. To tune into where a lot of the stations are so you can hear a little more of what it does. Mm -hmm. 
Now this would be a good example. Watch. Get the noise, the noise reduction up. Makes it sound good. You're not plagued with static. You see, that's the principle. You still have some QSB. That's just the frequency. It's just the way that the bands work, okay? But watch. We'll move it back down. We'll go to the vertical. You can't hardly hear it. It's the whole point. Pull off the DNR, which is going to bring QRM into it. Still hear it. But does it sound as good? Listen. Does it sound as good on the AV680 vertical right now as it does when you do this? And you move over to the mag loop. There's, there's, just, there's no comparison. There just isn't. Okay, and if it sounds like I'm a fanboy, yeah, I guess I am. It's that good. But you gotta remember, folks, I've been doing this for almost 50 years. Let's just up the shortwave dial. Each one of these is own station, obviously. This is Radio Havana, Cuba. But what this does is it gives you a great idea of if you're a shortwave person and you like to still listen, you can hook this up. It's not hard to hook up to a even a classic shortwave station, you know, radio. I mean, like, say, for example... You know, you're running something like, uh, I don't know, a Sony 2010, okay? Or, I don't know, a uh, Grundig 750 or an 800. You can still hook that up to those. It's not hard to make a conversion. You just go from the SO239 to either a clip or you can go into a, a different adapter to go right into it. I mean, this antenna is so good, it's not hard to convert it. It's not at all. It comes with an SO239 and coax, you know, that you got to put that in there. But that's the connection. Doesn't come with the coax or the connector, but it does come ready to go. So if you've got a piece of coax with SO239 on it, just put an adapter on the other end of it, run it on your Sony 2010 or your Grundig 700, 750, 800, even your Texan. If you got an 880 or something, you can throw that onto a quarter inch jack. You're golden, man. Let's go back onto the dial, take a look and see what else is here. It's good stuff. I'm not kidding you. I've been up all night, literally just having fun. Just having fun. This is what brought me into radio in the first place. It's the reason I got excited into radio. I, I started listening to shortwave. And this was back in the day. I mean, this was back in the day. Now, look, here's 6175. Just Five kilohertz more. Totally separate frequency. Five kilohertz more. Another one. See, short radio still here. It hasn't went anywhere. You see, I go back to the days, way back, when, you know, Radio Free Europe existed. You know, Back when you would hear VOA broadcasts and, you know, tons of BBC. It's cool. 
I mean, it was just really, really neat, you know, back in the day. And I know shortwave has changed. I know we've definitely changed, you know, times have changed. The Internet has changed things. But shortwave's still here. And if you love listening, oh, man, there's some neat stuff you can still hear. You know, when you get on 40 meters, you've got to be careful once you get over that 7200 threshold because that's where you get into shortwave broadcasts. And shortwave broadcasters, they look at propagation forecasts real carefully. So what they do is they take a look and see, okay, propagation looks like it's going to be a little stronger now in 49 meters. We'll go to 49. Or, you know, maybe we need to go up to, I don't know, 60 meters or we got to go up to 75 or, or down to 75 or whatever. They'll work. 25 whatever as long as it's strong they'll work it they really will because they pay attention to it i mean they've got huge transmitters and a lot of money invested to it. they do a lot of money invested into it but that's why if you have one of these receive loop antennas like the mfj 1886 like the mfj 1788 or the mfj 17 Six was it seventeen eighty six? Yeah, I had to think of the numbers there. Sorry, you get you know a lot, a lot of eights and sixes shouldn't be that hard. Anyway, if you get one of those, the nice thing is you're buying an American-made product. That's cool. Okay, I like buying American-made. Second thing is it's an American company. Third is they're going to work with you. Great, great service people over there. Richard will make sure you're very well taken care of. You have any problem with something, I've had it. Trust me, I have had problems with MFJ stuff. I've called, they've helped, it's been good. That AV680, that's a high gain product owned by MFJ. High gain is part of MFJ. They helped me with a few problems I had initially when I put up that antenna. So they're very good at taking care of their customers. Let's listen a little further up their webcam and then we'll close this one out, all right? I'm going to show you something here. This used to be CHU Canada. It no longer is. Not here, but listen how good that sounds. Now let's turn the digital noise reduction up. Tell me you couldn't just enjoy that. Now, again, you're always going to have fade. That's just the way high frequency works. It's the way propagation works. But there you go. This is it at its best. The MFJ 1886, I think, is the best buy on the market for people who really love a good receive antenna. You know, something they're going to be able to listen to and enjoy and have some fun with, right? I mean, these signals are coming in strong, guys. They really are. I'm going to go ahead and close it out at this point because I think we're good. Made a good made a good video here. I think we've made some some valid points about why it's important for you to have a product like this if you're serious about hearing what you're missing. Now, what's the main point? You can turn this antenna very easily. It's only two and a half pounds. Turn it the direction you want to work. On the outside of the loop is the way you turn it. So if this was, for example, the loop, looking at it from the side, right? You're looking at it sideways, right? That's that's the looking if it was the hole, the middle of it. Here's the side. That's the way it works, front to back, okay? So you just point it the direction you want it to work. Away you go. I mean, it's that easy. And it took maybe 10 minutes to put it on a wood dowel. That was it. It already comes with everything connected. You just have to put the two U-bolts on, and away you go. Quick, easy, and it works even three feet off the ground. 
MFJ 1886, a wonderful receive antenna. And if you're serious about amateur radio or DXing, whether it be long wave, short wave, or the amateur bands, it's a ham antenna that you need. And I'll be honest with you, we spend so much time looking at the next great radio, the next great antenna, the next great this, that, and them. But I got to tell you, folks, in 47 years, since 1973, I've been listening to DX. I really have. 72, 73, somewhere in there. But I was really young. It's like, really young kid. Heard, to be honest with you, KFI in Los Angeles. I heard it. I was so excited. It's the first time I ever heard a far station like that at night. I was thrilled and I was hooked. This antenna will help you do that. So if you're serious about amateur radio, you've got a good ham set, you got yourself a good antenna, you bought the feed line, you're making contacts, but the noise is driving you nuts. Or you're missing QSOs because they keep fading out so much on you. You saw what the gain on this antenna is. It's huge. That's why you need it. Because if you have this in your arsenal, you've now got a good optimal transmit antenna and you've invested in a good receive antenna too. Thanks for watching the North America Radio Guide. I'll look forward to doing the next video where we'll show you about turning the radio antenna in a way that you can mount it without having to get a rotator because I know it costs a lot of money I'm trying to save you a little bit of cash, but don't skimp on the receive antenna. All right, guys, God bless you. Thanks for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, God bless you. Goodbye, everybody.